Hello there, welcome to this video presentation about Lord Burley's Arms Houses. This presentation will focus on a guide to the different question types that might come up when you are answering questions about Lord Burley and the construction of his arms houses in the 1590s in Elizabethan England. So Lord Burley's Arms Houses is the historic environment. And when you're learning about the historic environment, it's really important to understand the key features of the location. So Lord Burley's Arms Houses were built on the site of an old medieval hospital, which was founded by a monk called Brando de Fasato in 1174. It was a very prominent location by the River Welland in the middle of Stamford. So you could not notice um, these arms houses. So this kind of ha highlights things like Lord Burley built these arms houses to um, provide a lasting legacy, to, to show off so that everyone was aware that he was doing this, but also with that connection, that continuity, um, of the wealthy people helping out the poor. And of course, that was a Christian duty as well. Now, the choice of the location at Stamford is significant. Stamford is in Lincolnshire. Um, the location of the almshouses is just one mile away from Burley House. In fact, Lord Burley grew up in Stamford. His grandfather, David, had moved to Stamford. He was an important member in the court of Henry VII and Henry VIII. And of course, the location is close to St. Mary's Church and also, crucially, St. Martin's Church. And we can see that Lord Burley's tomb is actually um, located in St. Martin's Church in Stamford. So by building the almshouses in this location, it's almost like Lord Burley um, coming home and almost about him providing his lasting legacy in the place where he grew up. So we can see here some important information, the arms houses on the banks of the river, um, just near to the main road. So again, everyone would have seen it. Uh, another picture there of St. Martin's Church, which is just up the road from the arms houses. Lord Burley was, of course, born nearby in the, in the town of Bourne. Uh, and there's a picture of there of Burley House as well. So it's really important to understand the significance of the location. Questions for Lord Burley's arms houses will focus on one of these different concepts. So it could be a causation question, a question about change, a question about continuity, i.e. things staying the same, or a question about consequence. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some different examples of some questions for you to think about um, within your work. So let's have a look at the first type. So this is a causation type question. The main reason for building an arms house was to leave a lasting legacy for its founder. How far does the study of Lord Burley's arms houses in the 16th century support this statement? So in terms of the structure for this answer, you're looking at um, looking at three different factors plus a conclusion. So you're going to start off and you're going to think about what's called the given factor. So if you look at the question, they've given you the factor of leaving a lasting legacy. So that should be your first paragraph. You can see here, it's almost like an iceberg. This um, is then exposed to you and you know that your first paragraph is going to be, well, actually, the main cause for, for building an arms house was about creating a lasting legacy. And then you're going to write a paragraph about creating a lasting legacy. Then you need two other factors. So here's what my suggestion would be for two other factors. My second factor would be about religion. I talk about how religion has influence for arms houses being built. The third factor, that would be growing national problem of poverty you'd write a paragraph about that and you try and link the different factors together and all the time you want to um, use detailed evidence um, relevant evidence and um, killer facts for example so some of those ideas that i've shown you before avoid description analyze the importance of the factor throughout so say this was an important factor because and then crucially you've got to judge which is the most important factor and that's where your conclusion comes in right at the end. I'd encourage you to make sure that your conclusion, you know, is a good amount of detail and depth. And this is where you can really sort of compare some of the factors together. But ultimately, you want to choose one of those three factors as being what do you think was the most crucial factor. So what I'm going to show you now is a plan for this question. So this shows you a plan for this question. Now, we're not going to read through all of this in too much depth and detail, but if you look at lasting legacy, you're going to look at the fact that Lord Burley wanted to be remembered by building the arms houses. So what's the evidence of this? Well, it was the fashion of the time to build arms houses, but also um, the ordinances. If you look at it, the ordinances, the rules, of the arms house, they talk about how the men should provide service and honour Lord Burley and his heirs. So that suggests that he wants 
his legacy to be there. The ordinance were also printed by the Royal Printer in London in 1595. So I think therefore and that's almost like the 16th century equivalent of, you know, posting on Instagram or something. So that therefore shows that he wanted everyone to know about this. So it was about being remembered. It's like almost like a memorial to Lord Burley, these almshouses. You know, we still call them Lord Burley's almshouses, don't we? And um, the location right bang in the middle of the centre of Stamford, you know, and, and there's, a, there's a very much this idea that he builds the arms house in the place where he grew up. And of course, the fact he bought the site in 1549 shows that perhaps he always intended to be this legacy and perhaps the death of his wife, Mildred, prompted him to actually make this almost like dedication and build the arms house. So an alternate factor is religion. Burley's a Protestant Puritan leanings. Therefore, he's built the almshouses to reflect his religious beliefs. It's a religious duty to help the poor. And in particular, the Puritan idea is that the poor needed educating and helping, particularly with morals. Now, we can see that in the ordinances, can't we? We can see in the ordinances that they had to be good Christian men. So this is very much about helping the deserving poor um, at the time. Um, so the ordinances required men to attend church three times a week, learn the Ten Commandments, present themselves to the vicar of St. Martin's. And there were fines for not attending church as well. And then you could look at it and say, well, actually, you know what? The main reason is about the growing problem of poverty in the 1590s. Lord Burley is aware of that through his work in government, attended 97 percent of Privy Council meetings, um, was responsible for the Book of Orders. You know, his stamp is all over that. Those legislation, those laws, 1572 Vagabonds Act, for example. So he would have heard different appeals from from JPs. You know, in some of the sources you looked at, you've seen that horse um, source, not horse source from Edward Hext, for example. Um, talking about the problem of poverty. Um, so perhaps this is Lord Burley's own personal response to back up some of the stuff that he's been doing nationally. So have a look at the next question. So you could get a question about change. So the main change that the building of arms houses demonstrated was the shifting attitude towards poverty in Elizabethan England. So this is a question about change. So we're looking saying, does the building of the arms houses reflect that there was shifting attitude towards poverty in Elizabethan England. So there's your first given factor, shifting attitudes towards poverty. You can write a factor on that, but then you need to think of your other two factors. So what other examples of change does the building of the arms houses represent? So here's the next one. You could write about religion. And religion, of course, is changing during this time because we've seen the Reformation, we've seen the change in the 16th century from the Catholic to the Protestant church. So um, if you look at, say, the old medieval hospitals and Brando de Fossato, um, who, whose site with Lord Burley's Arms House was then built on, you know, that, that was very much about the Catholic duty to, to help out the poor, etc. This is still religion, but it's a change because this is much more of a Puritan influence. We see other Puritans like Robert Dudley, they build arms houses. So Burley's a Protestant with Puritan leanings, therefore he you know, he represents that change of, of Protestants wanting to get involved in the building of arms houses as well, particularly Puritans. Then your other example is that it's the growing fashion of building arms houses at the time. You then, as usual, going to have a conclusion. So you've got that same structure, whether you kind of do these questions. But let's have a look at a, a more detailed plan for the change question. You see there, the first paragraph is about shifting attitudes towards poverty. So you're going to have to appreciate that in the Elizabethan times, there is a bit of a change in attitude from regarding be beggars and poorer people as sturdy beggars and the idle poor. This idea that you're poor because you're lazy, that we see at the start of the Elizabethan rule. We see, for example, um, the attitude of people like Thomas Harmon when he writes his book about um, beggars in 1566, 1567, ties into this idea of the terror of the tramp, this fear of the nobility of um, perhaps rebellions that are happening. William Harrison, when he wrote his book, um, estimated there were about 10,000 beggars in England. So you can see why people were concerned about it. You know, people at the time thought things like the Northern Rebellion represented what might happen, Northern Rebellion of 1568, what might happen if there it, not a lot is done about um, poverty. Now, attitudes begin to change partly because of local laws and changes in local areas like Ipswich, Norwich, York, etc. And we very much see this almost like dual approach, a mixed economy of both punishment, but also help towards poor people. And the 1572 Vagamons Act shows that, you know, there's punishments for, for beggars, you know, things like whipping, for example. But there's also promises of help with you no know, tax systems to 
generate money in local areas to help out poor people. There's Lord Burley's Book of Orders, the Elizabethan Poor Law of 1601. So you could say, well, actually, Burley as a key minister in Elizabethan towns was influenced by the shifting attitude. And therefore, he saw that the government was taking more responsibility. Therefore, he felt that he personally, you know, as somebody that was the key minister in Elizabeth's government, he should take action himself. Religion, we're going to talk about how Burley is a Protestant Puritan leaning. So we're going to tap into some of that other ideas that we've talked about. The Puritan belief that the poor needed educating, helped fill the void after the decline of Catholicism, after the Reformation. And of course, when the, the Reformation happened, there was a concern that the poor wouldn't be as well looked after. But actually, the evidence suggests that charitable giving remains consistent all the way through the Reformation. The ordinances themselves, so, and this is where you need to use evidence from the actual historic environment. The ordinances require men to attend uh, church three times a week, learn the Ten Commandments, fines for not attending church. So this demonstrates that, that this is another key change that the building of the almshouses represents, this shift from Catholicism to Protestantism. And then the final change is about the growing fashion of building almshouses. You could write about this. So, you know, this is about showing off your wealth this is about your lasting legacy many other people built arms houses like the archbishop um, of canterbury john whitgift margaret clifford the countess of northumberland robert dudley built arms houses obviously a well-known puritan as well so that's how you would do that question okay on to um continuity question Okay, so we'll have a look at a continuity type question next. So this question, um, quite a tricky one, this one. The main example of continuity that the building of almshouses demonstrates is the centuries old Christian tradition of the rich helping out the poor. How far does a study of Lord Burley's almshouses in the 16th century support this statement? So um, let's have a look at how you might do this question. Well, firstly, you're going to start off with your given the idea of maintaining continuity with the Christian tradition of the rich helping out the poor. That one's fairly straightforward, but then we can look at some other ideas of how we could tackle this question. We could also look at continuity of attitudes to the poor. We could then look at continuity of the problem of poverty and then finish up with a conclusion. So let's have a look at how this answer might play out. OK, so your first paragraph is going to be about maintaining continuity with the centuries old tradition of helping um, others with that Christian duty. So you're going to start off with the idea of Lord Burley being a Protestant Puritan leanings. His actions are, a, are a kind of like a continuation of the Christian duty to help the poor, which had been seen before the Reformation. and was obviously important within the Catholic Church. Now, the key way that Burley demonstrates this continuity within the site is about the fact that he builds the almshouse on the site of an old medieval hospital built in 1174 by Brando de Fasato. You can also talk about all the religious rules um, within the almshouses is represents a little bit of continuity, I suppose, with when the monastery used to help used to help out the um, the people um, that you know they would pray for them and that type of thing as well. Um, so there's a lot of continuity within that. Um, and very much maintaining the tradition of wealthier people helping out the poorest in society. In terms of attitude towards the poor, you may well want to challenge the question a little bit, because obviously there are some changes in the attitudes to the poor in Elizabethan times. But where you can get that continuity in is the idea that the rich are sort of helping out the poor, but in a way that they want to kind of stave off that kind of threat of revolution to you know, bring in these ideas about the terror of the tramp and um, the fear that there had been at the time in 1568 of the northern rebellion and then the other thing that i would really bring in here is the idea of the great chain of being which is all about continuity you see lord burley was was a conservative he um wanted to maintain the status quo so in building the arms houses is not about him trying to help the poorest achieve their objectives to become members of the gentry or nobility it's actually about keeping them in their place and sort of saying very publicly this is about um, the rich are going to help out the poorest but also the poor um, is in society they need to be educated they need to be given morals and of course they need to be um, provide service for the richer people so that's where that continuity is and then the last factor 
I would talk about that the, the problem of poverty is an example of continuity as well. So the building of the arms houses represents that continuity of finding solutions to tackle the problem of poverty, which has obviously been there through time. And the idea that poverty was an acute problem in the 1590s with things like poor harvest, high food prices, inflation, and particularly harvest failures. But this isn't that much different from other time periods where rich people have, you know, given out arms, for example, given out help to the poor, given out food to the poor, um, and also built arms houses previously as well. So it's about, you know, things that are being done to tackle problems of poverty. All right, so the last question is around consequence. The main consequence of the building of arms houses was leaving a lasting legacy for its founder. How far does the study of Lord Burley's arms houses in the 16th century support this statement? So what could we write about for this one? Well, firstly, we could talk about leaving a lasting legacy. Um, as the given factor and then we're going to explore a couple of other factors so another couple of factors might be about the main consequences about maintaining a great chain of being um, and then a third consequence is about the growing problem of poverty and about tackling poverty and obviously you're going to want to link this into what comes afterwards with the 1601 Elizabethan poor law as well and then you're going to finish up obviously with your conclusion so again, you've got an essay plan for that question. Um, talk about leaving a lasting legacy. Um, you know, the idea that he wanted to be remembered. This is very much a memorial to him. Then you've got the idea about maintaining the social order, about keeping a poor in a place, about Lord Burley being a conservative. And he was all about the conserving power of the monarch. Um, arms has a visual way of showing it was the duty of the rich to look after the poorest. Perhaps wanted to copy other people that had built arms houses like Robert Dudley and uh, the Archbishop of Canterbury, John Whitgift, but and also maybe set an example to others as well. So it reinforced the great chain of being. And then the last one is that um, a key consequence of the um, building of arms houses was about actually a practical solution for dealing with the problem of poverty, especially after the Reformation had taken away the monasteries. This was a way where that old um, sort of medieval idea of providing hospitality for people could certainly be seen. And you can certainly link that into the sort of um, laws at the time that had made um, the Elizabethan government had passed laws which had made the building of arms houses easier for rich people to do and obviously it all culminates in the 1601 Elizabethan poor law. So thanks very much for listening to that that was a video presentation about Lord Burley's arms houses the historic environment thank you very much.